subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. One of the ways we travel back in time and understand history is of course by exploring fossils, whether those be here on Earth or out there in space. And in space, beyond the asteroid belt, it is basically a deep freezer. Everything in this region of the solar system has stayed the way it has been since it formed for the most part. So when we study distant objects, we are looking at them exactly as they were when they formed billions of years ago and this gives us a great deal of information about the conditions that existed in the early solar system when the solar system itself formed and when the sun was born. The latest of such fossil missions to be launched is NASA's Lucy mission which is on a 12 year journey to study some very interesting asteroids which orbit the sun in the same orbit as Jupiter. In this video, we'll be discussing an ancient human skeleton, the Beatles and a super hit of theirs, Achilles and the battle at Troy, and of course, some science about the solar system. Most of us know what asteroids are. They are rocky, small planetesimal objects that orbit the sun. Unlike a comet, they don't really have a tail even though they can have ices on their surface. The main difference between an asteroid and a comet is what the bodies are made up of and their composition. Asteroids have metal and rocks primarily and comets have ices and dust. Asteroids have formed closer to the sun. Most of our asteroids are in the asteroid belt and orbit the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Comets, on the other hand, form farther out beyond Neptune in a region called the Kuiper Belt or even beyond that in the spherical region called the Oort Cloud. Asteroids come in many shapes and sizes. The largest of these is Ceres, which is actually a dwarf planet. There are five dwarf planets in our solar system and Ceres is the only one that is in the inner solar system. The other four are beyond Neptune. There are also two other large asteroids, there's Vesta and there's Pallas. These are the three largest asteroids and they're roughly almost spherical in shape. We think that they are planetesimals that form this way and are the only ones who survived and retained their shape after formation. Vesta, in fact, is often even visible to us with the naked eye. Some asteroids even have moons orbiting them. Now, why are so many asteroids, a majority of asteroids in the solar system, concentrated in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter? Well, the simple reason is because they're all trying to form a planet from the time the solar system formed and Jupiter's gravity keeps interfering and messing with the planet formation, breaking up anything that tries to coalesce. So these rocks can actually never come together, coalesce and stick together gravitationally. That is one reason. The other is that there also just isn't enough mass in all the material in the asteroid belt to come together to form a planet. But there's no chance of that happening anyway because Jupiter keeps tugging at the rocks as it moves around in its orbit. These are the asteroids that are in between Mars and Jupiter. There is another group of asteroids that actually share the same orbit as Jupiter when they go around the Sun. The first of these was discovered in 1906 and it was named Achilles after the legendary Greek warrior. Then two more were discovered, they were named Hector and Patroclus. And all of these are characters from the Trojan War, from Homer's The Iliad. Hector was the greatest warrior in all of Troy who was finally killed by Achilles and Patroclus was a childhood friend and a lover of Achilles. Then astronomers discovered more of these asteroids and they realized that all of these asteroids actually share the same orbit as Jupiter. Because they were named after characters from the Iliad, they came to be known as the Trojans. Nothing really to do with the Trojan horse as such because Homer's Iliad did not have the Trojan horse in it. Astronomers then realize that there are two camps of asteroids, ones that lead Jupiter in orbit and ones that trail behind Jupiter. 
So the ones that lead Jupiter in orbit are all named after the Greek camp in the Trojan War and the ones that trail are all named after the people belonging to Troy in the Trojan War even though all these asteroids are called Trojans. Trojan is a generic name for any body that orbits on the same path as a bigger planet. Other planets have Trojans too, Mars, Neptune and even Earth has Trojans which orbit the Sun in the same orbit as the planet. And with Jupiter Trojans, all in all, we've discovered nearly 10,000 of them. The Lucy mission, which was launched on Saturday, is now on its way to observe by flying by one main belt asteroid and then seven different Trojans that share orbit with Jupiter. Astronomers pick the most boring names for exoplanets, but the most innovative name for missions. Lucy is actually a wordplay on multiple different things. In 1974, paleoanthropologists discovered a collection of many hundreds of pieces of fossilized bones in Ethiopia, belonging to a single individual, a female who lived 3.2 million years ago. Obviously, 3.2 million years ago means she was not Homo sapiens, but she was an early hominin, a species called Australopithecus. The excavation camp named her Lucy because when they discovered the bones and were working on recovering them, the beetle's hit Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was constantly playing on loop the entire evening. Because this mission to study the Trojans is now a mission to go explore the fossils of the solar system and some of those fossils are shiny like diamonds in the sky, well the mission is called Lucy. This is the first mission by NASA or in fact anyone else with a plan right from the launch to explore 8 different targets. Lucy will arrive at one group of Trojans in 2027 after flying by its first target in the asteroid belt and then it will come back to Earth for a gravity assist and then go in the other direction to reach the other group of Trojans near Jupiter. The Trojans orbit in stable orbits on two Lagrangian points. These are five different points in a two-body system that are gravitationally stable where other bodies can exist in stable orbits. Jupiter Trojans orbit at the L4 and L5 points and they are nowhere close to the planet. In fact, most Trojans, especially ones at the extreme ends away from Jupiter, are as far away from Jupiter as they are from the Sun. So quite a safe distance away and these are physically stable orbits so they will continue to exist this way for the most part. Lucy is the first mission to study the Trojans and the mission will attempt to understand why some of these Trojans seem to be very similar to the icy bodies that form beyond the Kuiper belt while the other Trojans are similar to asteroids in the main belt. What is the composition of all of these asteroids? Are they rich in volatiles and water? How did these Trojans, the main belt asteroids and the comets beyond the Kuiper belt form when the solar system itself was created? These are all some of the questions that we are hoping to answer. Primitive bodies like these well-preserved asteroids and Trojans help us understand a great deal about the origins and evolution of the solar system and by extension always the origin and evolution of water, organic compounds and life.